Hey, are you physicists or chemists? Because now we're kind of dealing in, in, in a zone where chemistry and physics might you know intertwine just a little bit. Um, so today we are, we're uh, extending on the quantum system of the quantum number system of um, of the atom, and now to, we're, we're talking about how to add, how to draw on um, the electrons, and how to add on electrons, and how the electrons configure themselves in the atom. So basically, there are three rules for this for electron configuration. The first one is the off bow principle, and what it says is that basically electrons are added on to the lowest available energy orbit orbital. So if we have, let's say, we have one s and we have two s and two p, the electrons are always added on first to the one s, then the two s, then the two p's. That's what the off-bar principle says. The Pauli exclusion principle just says that no two electrons can have the same quantum numbers. So what it just says is that we can basically fit two electrons in each orbital because they have different spins. They must have different spins to be fit to be fitted on in the same orbital. And Hans rule says exactly what is shown here that when adding electrons to a subshell, and remember a subshell is basically this. That's a subshell. This p orbital right here. That's subshell. Let me just throw away that circles. So when added, when adding on electrons to a subshell, let me just redo that just to clarify. So when we're adding on electrons to a subshell, we add on one first, and we don't pair up. The reason why we don't pair up is because is because of Hans rule, which says that when adding on electrons to a subshell, we only pair them up once all the orbitals are filled, and the and all the orbitals aren't filled yet because we have two extra two empty orbitals. So what, so what we have to do according to Han is that we have to fill these up with electrons then we can start pairing up the um, electrons. So these are the basic rules for electron configuration. Now let's move on to some examples. Now I've provided a periodic table here just so you can see what's going on. So um, let's start off with the basic hydrogen atom. And before I start I'm going to recap that Quantum numbers come in four set. I mean, four different. A set of quantum numbers comes in four numbers. The first one is your shell. The second one is your subshell. Sorry, not M. It's S. I mean L. <laughs> the third one is your magnetic quantum number, and your last one is your spin. So these are your four quantum numbers that you're gonna memorize. So hydrogen has only, as the diagram says. 1 s. There's only one orbital. So at n equals, so for hydrogen, let me use blue for hydrogen. For hydrogen, it has only one electron, right? So if we were to draw out a, um, a an energy diagram, which is how we draw out the electron configuration, it is always um, ordered by increasing energy. So the lowest energy orbital will go below, which is obviously 1 s. And as we fill up, we get 2s and 2p, and then 3s, 3p, blah, blah, blah. So for hydrogen, we, hydrogen has only one electron. So according to the off bar principle, we only add it up to the, to, the, um, to the lowest energy orbital, which is 1s. That's hydrogen. If we wanted to talk about helium, which is next, Helium has two electrons, so we again we fill up one s again. But since it has two electrons, we fill up with uh, another electron with a spin down, according to the Pauli exclusion principle, which says that no two electrons can have the same quantum number. Therefore, it is forced to have a different spin. And then lithium, lithium. I'm going to use a blue. No, we use blue already. Let's use orange for lithium. Lithium has three electrons, so how we fill it up? We'll fill up with, according to alpha principle, the lowest energy orbit, which is 2s now. So we fill it up like that. That's lithium. How about the next one, which is beryllium? And beryllium has four electrons, so again, it fills up here. That's beryllium. Okay. Then we get on, let's do one last example. What if we use, how about carbon? 
let's just jump all the way to carbon and let's use brown for that if we have carbon carbon has six electrons so four are filled now we need to fill out two more and how do we fill those two well the lowest according to our principle which the lowest orbital should be filled which is 2p and so we fill one here and oh wait according to Han's rule we have we can't parallel up yet we need to fill up each orbital first so the next one goes here now we have six electrons and this is how carbon is filled so the this is called the energy diagram of at, of the electron configurations but if you want to write it out in notation this is how we write it out so for carbon which has uh, six electrons we'll fill that up with this is how the notation is for carbon 1s 2 2s 2 and 2p2 now as you can see what's going on here the 1s I'm gonna use a different color for this the 1s here basically tells you the um, the orbital that you're dealing with or the energy level so this one tells you n and the s tells you which orbital it is what kind of orbital it is so 1s has two electrons so the, 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 the exponent tells you how many electrons are in that orbital this one is 2s so the 2s orbital has two electrons and then the 2p orbital has two electrons so the notation for it is kind of is, is, is pretty is pretty simple um, but it's actually not all fun and games it's actually not just it's actually not so simple once you stop at calcium once you get to calcium you get to uh, some kind of wonky stuff that's going on here because as you can see from this periodic table 3d the 3d orbital right here <laughs> my box is kind of bad the 3d orbital is actually at a higher energy level than 4s as, as you can see you fill out 3p then 4s you jump from 3p to 4s then you go back down to 3d so if we were to draw that out actually um, let me just erase all this um, let me use a bigger eraser just to show you how this little quirk is going on here it's once you get past calcium it's it's it's, it's kind of you, you, you're going to like uncharted territory it's kind of weird how the, the 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 electrons configure themselves so if we were to draw the energy diagram again we go to 1s 2s and then 2p which is at a slightly higher um energy level then we go to uh, 3s and then 3p and then 4s so instead of going to 3d next remember because at, at n equals 3 we have three different types of um, orbitals we skip ahead to 4s so we jump from 3p to 4s then we go back down to 3d which has five different orbitals at 3d and the subshell of 3d remember we have five orbitals from last lesson if you have no idea how I got how I got these five orbitals from 3d check out my previous tutorial on quantum numbers so from 4s you jump to you go back down to 3d then you go back up to 4p which has 7 2 4 6 7 orbitals 4p so it gets kind of wonky and especially when the when the actinides and lanthanides come in over here it's like kind of messed up from 6s to 4f then to 5d yeah you just you just can kind of get used to it after a while and that's why in your early years of Bohr, of using the bohr rutherford model they only kind of stop at calcium because once you get past calcium it gets kind of wonky so they, they they barely test you anything after calcium but now that you know that you know the act the correct version of the atom now they're starting to teach you about starting to ask questions on on uh on transition metals and and you know all these weird little metals that we have here so before i i i leave you guys let's do one last example one weird example let's try um gold let's try gold okay so gold is right here let's try gold and actually, I'm gonna write it down here because there's more space here. So gold, as we know, has 79 electrons. So let's try and write down the the, the the notation for it because if we, if we try to draw the actual energy diagram, so it'll take us quite a while. So let's just do the um the the the, not the notation. So first, we are filling the 1s orbital, and again in the 1s orbital, there are two possible electrons there. And we can actually just just based off the, the the this diagram right here, the periodic table. 
So 2s2, because there are two here, 1, 2. Now moving on to the 2p section. So 2p, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in the 2p um, orbital, 2p subshell. And then 3s2, and then 3p6. You're just going across the, the, the periodic table here. It's kind of simple. 4s2, and then 3d. And we're dropping down from 4s to 3d. 3, and how many other? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 in 3d orbital. And then go to 4p6, 5s2, 4d. We're dropping down again. 10. Let's move down here. 5p6, 6s2, and finally 5d. 1, 2, Oh wait, no, 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 no. Right. This is where we get a bit wonky here too. Because the lanthanides come in. So we have from 6S2, we're jumping back down to 4F. And there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 in the 4F orbital. And then we go back to 5D. And then there's 2, 4, 6, Two, four, six, eight, nine. So this is the long notation uh, for gold, and there's actually a shorthand form of doing it. And what a shorthand form does, what you do for the shorthand form is instead of writing this whole chunk out, we say, okay, so what is the um, the, the 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 next lowest valence um, um, element that it can it can have? So the next lowest valence from gold is xenon. So we say. Let's start at xenon. So xenon has basically almost all of these numbers up to the 5p here. So xenon has, I think, from 1s2 to 5p6. So what we can say is that, you know, we don't even need any of this. We don't, we don't need to write down all of this because we know that all this is in xenon. All we need to write down is what's in the valence, um, the, the valence of, of gold. So we know that we can write down 6x2, 6s2 from xenon. Xenon goes to 6s2. And for f fourteen and five d nine. So basically, the short the shorthand version just eliminates um, the unnecess unnecessary parts because all the all these parts are basically contained inside xenon itself. Then to add on from xenon to gold, we need to add on six s two four f fourteen and five d nine. So hopefully you guys uh, um, can see how electron configuration works, and it's not as simple as we thought in grade nine, ten, eleven, where we were taught uh, the Borrow the foot diagram because you know as as um as we find out right now, it, everything's not, not that simple because we have the we have four s jumping down to three d then we have six s here jumping down to four f then jumping back to five d then up again to six p so it's kind of messy and scientists are still trying to figure out what's going on here, so yeah hopefully you guys can understand what's happening here and I'll see you guys next time peace out.